Hi, I'm Kathy Johnson, and I've worked with watercolor for a long time. You may know my work from Northlight Books. Strathmore asked me if I'd be willing to share some watercolor techniques with you in this workshop. So that's what we're doing. This is the basic supply list for this workshop. You'll see more in the printed material. We'll be using the Strathmore Visual Journals. This one's mixed media and this one is watercolor. We'll be using both of them so um, you'll get a variety of, of techniques. And of course this being a watercolor workshop you will need watercolors. This is a commercial set that has um, pan colors that come right in it or this is a folding, inexpensive folding palette that I've filled with colors of my own choice. You can use either pan like this or tube colors, which is what I used here, whatever your preference is. And if you have a favorite palette, of course, you are welcome to use it. You'll need some watercolor brushes. I like to have a couple of flats and some rounds with a good point. And you'll also want a bristle brush like this, a small inexpensive bristle brush to spatter or to scrub with. Uh, I sharpen the end of it so that it gives me yet another tool to work with. And by the way, some of these flat brushes do have an angled tip that allows you to get interesting effects. We'll be covering those in the workshop. Many people are enjoying uh, water brushes now. Try to get a flat and a round one. They hold the water right in the handle. Very handy for travel sketching, especially. Um, <clears throat> we'll cover a couple of different techniques using um, ink. These are uh, waterproof, or, and also try to find one that is water soluble. That'll be fun. You may or may not want to draw guidelines first, but I will be demonstrating that in the workshop. Uh, this is a graphite mechanical pencil with a nice uh, an eraser. You can also use any sort of artist pencil or an HB or a number two office pencil, whatever you like. Many people say you shouldn't erase, but if you're more comfortable with it and it makes you happier, feel free. This is a soft vinyl eraser, very handy. Or they also come like this that you can advance as you use it up, so you always have a clean end. We'll try some ink pens as well, some fountain pens. So if you've got a favorite, um, keep that handy. We'll play with some watercolor pencils as well, combining them with watercolor. It's a great effect. And of course, being watercolor, you'll need a water container. So this one is a little sprayer I got in the travel department, which we use for a lot of different techniques. But your, your primary water container can be just about anything. A freezer container, a cup, whatever you have handy around the house. How to re-wet your paints and how to make a wash. I'm going to use this set because it shows up well on camera, actually. Um, and here's where my little water sprayer comes in beautifully. Oh, I'm going to move my paper so I don't get it wet right now. If you uh, re-wet your pan paints, either commercial pan paints or ones you've created yourself, um, and let them sit for, oh, 30 seconds anyway, uh, they will just re-wet beautifully and lift beautifully as well. And if you feel the need to clean your palette, which obviously I do, give it a little spray as well and then wipe the mess out. You can do this anytime or you can leave some of these. Well, that's kind of interesting. We'll just leave that one and maybe I'll use it later. A uh, friend of mine used to call that palette grays when she mixed all the colors that were still on her palette, and she did the most beautiful watercolors, so we will just worry about that one later. Okay, um, let me show you the difference between re-wetting and, or pre-wetting, I should say, and not. Um, here's Thalo Blue, 
just lifted directly without any pre-wetting. And I hope I'm picking the right color and I'm not. Okay. Here's one that I pre-wetted. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? Again, let's try that with red. Move this over so you can see a little better. Here's a red that I lifted directly dry from the uh, palette, and here's one that has been allowed to sit for a few minutes. Makes a very big difference, doesn't it? Okay. Now, how you make a wash, or how you get started, is, um, well, let's turn it, hmm. let's not. I'll use this. You dip into your water, water container, and put some water onto your paint. And again, depending on how much you want, and then you can move that to your palette with your brush. And just keep doing that till you have the amount and the intensity of the wash that you want. This is burnt sienna, one of my most useful colors. So it's, it's very handy and very easy to make a wash. You just keep dipping as much as you need to. We'll do a different color here. Just keep dipping and adding however much water you want. Using a white palette like this helps you to judge your uh, color a little better. But it will go on lighter on your paper than you think it's going to. So you may want to mix it up so it looks stronger than you think you're going to need. Like that. Here are a few very basic watercolor washes, and I'm going to show you the flat wash. You tip your paper just a little bit like this, and you see it forms a bead at the bottom. You just keep picking that bead up and moving it down the paper. And of course you can work much larger than this. but. I'm wanting to get it on the camera. A flat wash is the most difficult one and very seldom you really need one in nature unless you're doing abstract. You see where uh, the bead forms at the bottom. You can lift it with a wrung out brush so that it doesn't make a back run back into your um, wash, which you do not want. Okay. Now a graded wash is very similar to that. It's done almost the same way, and I'll use the same color so you can see. Again, keep the paper tipped. I'm going to move my water and hope I don't knock it over so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna move my paint because I have a very small working area. Okay, now, same thing. Let that bead of color form but then instead of adding paint, add a little clear water. And that will still move down the page. Add a little more clear water. And it still moves down the page. A little bit more clear water. And you have a nice graded wash. But again, you need to pick up that edge or you'll get a back run. And see the flat one is still wanting to form an edge down here, so I'll just pick it up. My favorite washes I call variegated washes. I don't know for sure what other people call them, but I find them rather interesting. You mix right on the page. And, ooh, let's try some of that. That makes a rather interesting effect. And you can scratch into it. Uh, you can use one of your angle end brushes once it starts to get a little bit dry and scrape back into it like that. Of course you can do that in these guys too. Like that. Gives them a little texture or you could 
raise the edge of a roof or something like that. Watercolor is extremely versatile. It just takes practice and learning how much water to put into your brush and how much to use in your wash and how to control it once it's on your paper. And that just takes practice.